Hey guys, this is Mrs. Butcher here today, and we are going to talk about the properties of real numbers. All right, we have six categories of properties that we're going to discuss, um, and then each of these is broken at, down into um, one or two different properties based on their um, operations that they apply to. The first of these is the closure property. All right, if I have a set of numbers, I say that that set is closed under a certain operation if I perform that operation on any of the numbers within that set and if I do that operation to that set of numbers my answer or my solution will still belong in that set of numbers. For example if I said the set of all real numbers then that set is closed under addition because if I take any two real numbers that exist in this world and I add them together my solution will always be another real number I can't add real numbers together and get imaginaries so it's closed under addition it's also closed under multiplication because for the same reason if I took any two real numbers in the world and multiplied them together my solution is always going to be a number that is also real all right, so that under closure, we have two properties that we need to learn. All right, the closure property of addition, and by addition, I'm including subtraction in that definition because subtraction is just the addition um, of a negative number. So the closure property of addition says that a plus b is a unique real number. There is only one solution when you add or subtract numbers. Okay. And the closure property of multiplication says that a times b is a unique real number. When I multiply or divide, I only get one solution. So can you think of an operation out there that um, is not closed then? Um, something that you could do and there's a something or something else as your answer. Just think about that. And when I say unique, let me just uh, clarify that for you real quick. That's where I mean only one, not like unique, like it's really cool, but unique like there's only one of them. All right, our second property is the properties that have to do with commutativity, and that means the order that the numbers are written. So these properties you should have learned before. We've got the commutative property of addition, and we've got the commutative property of multiplication. The commutative property of addition says that if I take two numbers, a and add it to b, a plus b, that's exactly the same thing as if I switch the order and make it b plus a. a plus b equals b plus a. That's always true, right? 2 plus 3 is 5. 3 plus 2 is still 5. It doesn't matter what order I write it in. Um, the commutative property of multiplication is the same thing with multiplying. So if I multiply a times b, that's the same thing as multiplying b times a. 6 times 2 is the same thing as 2 times 6. It doesn't matter. The order does not matter in addition and multiplication. Um, it is important for me to point out right now, if I'm um, quizzing or testing you or whatever over these properties, make sure that you write of addition commutative property of addition, or you write of multiplication. It takes both parts to get it completely right, to tell me the property and then what it's of. Now, the addition and multiplication parts should be pretty self-explanatory, um, but just don't forget to write it down. All right, the third property that we're going to discuss today is associativity. We've got the associative property of addition and we have the associative property of multiplication and that has to do with the way that numbers are grouped. Alright, so associative property of addition if I add A and B and C and I put A plus B in parentheses here. So if I added A and B first and then added C later that would be the same thing as if I took A and then added it to the combination of B plus C. It doesn't matter where the groups go. If only the groups change, we're just changing the association. So that's the associative property of addition. For example, um, 2 plus 3 in parentheses plus 1 
would be 5 plus 1, and that's 6. And that is equal to adding 2 plus 3 plus 1. Parentheses always comes first, so that would be adding 2 plus 4, which is still 6. So the grouping doesn't matter when you're adding. All right, the associative property of multiplication says the same thing. If I were to multiply A and B together first and then multiply them by C, it's the exact same thing as if I were to take A on the outside and then multiply it by B times C. If I just change the grouping, I don't change the order of the numbers. Remember, order of the numbers was commutative. The grouping, if the parentheses, if the groups move, if the groups change, then that's associative. So, like if I did 2 times 3 times 1, that's 6 times 1. If I did 2 times 3 times 1, that's 2 times 3, that's still 6. It doesn't matter where the parentheses go. Okay, the fourth thing we're going to talk about is the identity element. And the identity element is any element that leaves other elements unchanged. It lets them retain their identity. Now that I, um, identity element is not always the same. For example, when I'm adding, think, what is the number that I can add to any number out there that's not going to change that number? And you know what that is. That's zero. And now think, what number could I multiply any number by and have it not change? And that wouldn't be zero. If I multiplied anything by zero, I'd get zero. But the thing that doesn't change the, um, the number would be multiplying it by one. So our two properties then are the identity property of addition and the identity property of multiplication. The identity property of addition says that if I take any number a and add zero, then I get a. And the identity property of multiplication says that if I take any number a and multiply it by one, then I get a. Okay, the next properties we're going to discuss are the inverse properties. And before I do that, let me give you the, de the true definition of subtraction and the true definition of division. All right, the definition of subtraction is adding the opposite. So a minus b is the same thing as adding the opposite of b, a plus the opposite of b. The definition of division is multiplying by the reciprocal. So a divided by b is the same thing as taking a and multiplying it by the reciprocal of b. As long as b is not zero. I have to add that little disclaimer. We can't divide by zero. So we have our two properties. The inverse property of addition says that if I take any number and add its inverse, so a plus negative a, I'm going to get zero. And the inverse property of multiplication says that if I take any number and multiply it by its multiplicative inverse, then I'm going to get 1. The last thing we're going to talk about is distributivity. And with distributivity, we know that multiplication distributes over addition, but it does not distribute over other multiplication. And there's not a distributive property of addition um, there's just the distributive property, and that says if I take a and I put it out in front of parentheses b plus c, I can distribute that a and get a b plus a c. Now, note, please note, because I see this all the time, if I have a and then parentheses b times c, that does not equal a b times a c. Then you get the a in there twice, and you've got an a squared, and you've got an extra a that doesn't belong. So please make sure that you know it's only over addition. So there's all your properties. Oh, my dog, sorry. Okay, there's all my properties, and you guys have a good night. See you tomorrow.